Hello there. Today I'm going to show you how to calculate the component values for this circuit, which is a AC coupled emitter follower. So obviously we've got three resistors and a capacitor to calculate. I'm going to show you how the circuit works and basically some of the current paths and things like that in the circuit. And obviously this is intended for out of electronics exercise 2.8. So we'll be solving that at the same time. Obviously you might be familiar with the circuit, but what's the magic behind it? and how can we master it. So stick around because by the end of this video, you'll not only understand the emitter follower inside and out, but hopefully you'll be able to design your own circuit for your own requirements. So let's get started. So we are designing the circuit for exercise 2.8 from the auto of electronics, which we need to design an emitter follower. And the question says that we should design an emitter follower with 15 volt power supply to operate over audio range, which is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And we need to set the quiescent current to five milliamps. The input is capacitively coupled, but it does not mention anything about the output. So first of all, let's just have a quick look at an AC coupled emitter follower circuit. So you can see going from left to right, we have our input source here. We have a capacitor and then a potential divider over here we have a transistor and then we have a resistance on the emitter. The output voltage is obtained from the emitter of the NPN transistor or the top of the RE resistor on the diagram. And then on the right hand side, obviously, we have our power supply. So first up, we have a input capacitor over here. So obviously that is labeled C1. And this little guy plays a crucial role for the AC coupling, which is a requirement from the question. So what this does is that it is a very high resistance for DC signals. So for DC signals looking into this node over here, the resistance will be almost infinite. There'll be some small leakage current this way. So this capacitor will block any DC signals from entering over here. And the cutoff frequency for the AC signals or the DC signal will be dependent on these two resistors, the capacitor value and a function of RE and the beta of the transistor. This is important because we want our transistor to amplify only AC signals and we don't want any interference from DC for the question. Continuing to the left, we have R1 and R2, which form a potential divider. This potential divider is crucial for setting up the correct bias voltage on the base of this transistor. By adjusting the R1 and R2 values, we can precisely control the base voltage that appears here and therefore controlling the voltage that appears over here under DC condition. So basically when there is no input signal coming from here. So one of the requirements from the question obviously is to set the quiescent current, which is the current going in this direction to five milliamps when there is no input. So obviously we can use R1 and R2 to bias that properly and to set the midpoint as well for V out. So again, the R1 and R2 makes sure that the transistor is operating in the active region and sets up a bias point or quiescent current for V out as well. Now continuing left, we have Q1, which is our NPN transistor. For the transistor, we have our base over here, the collector over here, and the emitter, which is denoted with this arrow. So with the potential divider, we can set up suitable biasing voltage at the base. And in this configuration, the transistor is providing a current gain without changing the amplitude of the signal. So it's a emitter follower. From this junction here, which is the base of the transistor to the emitter of the transistor, we have roughly 0.6 volts drop. So if we bias our potential divider to produce, let's say, 7 volts here, then that means that we'll have 6.4 volts on this node over here. So we can use the VBE voltage to set our current as required from the question. And obviously, once we know the voltage that appears over here, we know that we want 5 milliamps going down, we can calculate the resistor for the RE. So what RE is doing is setting up the quiescent current that's required for the question. Obviously, the 15 volts is coming from our power supply right on the end over here. And we're going to be taking the output signal from V out over here. The first step for designing this circuit, we need to choose the appropriate VE, which I've labeled on the circuit as V out. So that's the emitter voltage. For the largest possible voltage swing, so a voltage swing going from 15 volts down to 0 volts, we need to set this point up to 7.5 volts. 
as that is halfway between the power supply. So if we set V out over here to 7.5, then that means that we need to set the base voltage to 7.5 plus VBE, so that's 0 0.6 volts. So that gives us a base voltage of 8.1 volts over here. So we have 7.5 volts here, and we have 8.1 volts over here, which is the base of the transistor. Next, we can calculate RE, as we know the 7.5 volts here, and we know that we want a quiescent current of 5 milliamps. So 7.5 volts divided by 5 milliamps gives us a RE resistance of 1.5 kilo ohms. So we can set RE to be equal to 1.5 kilo ohms, and that will give us a 5 milliamps going down this path when this point is 7.5 volts. Now for step three, we can calculate the value for R1 and R2. Now this is a little bit more complicated, but I'll go through it in detail so you know how to do it. So previously we calculated that VB needs to be equal to 8.1 if we want 7.5 on V out. And we know that our power supply is 15 volts. So we need to do the potential divider that creates 8.1 volts over here. So what we can do is find out the ratio between 8.1 and 15 volts. So that gives me 0 0.54. So if we normalize our total resistance to 1, 0 0.54 of that resistance will be on R2. And the remainder, which is 0 0.46, will be on R1. So if we assume our beta is 50 for this transistor, or let's say its most minimum value, then we can calculate the current going into the base as 5 milliamps, which is what the quiescent current on here, divide by 50. So that gives us a current into the base of 100 microamps. So if you have 100 microamps going into here, we don't want to load R1 and R2 so much so that it gets affected by the 100 microamps that needs to flow into this direction. So what we'll do is make sure that the current flowing down R1 and R2 is at least 10 times the current that's flowing down into the base of the transistor. So we know that we've got 15 volts coming in here from the power supply and we need at least 1 milliamp going down this path. Then we can calculate the total resistance of R1 and R2 by basically doing 15 volts divided by 1 milliamp, which gives us a total resistance of 15 kilo ohms. So this is basically we're going back to our VBVS ratio. So if you have a total resistance of 15 kilo ohms for R1 and R2, we can basically calculate R2 to be equal to 15,000 times 0.54, which is equal to 8.1 kilo ohms on R2. And then, as I said before, the remainder needs to go into R1. So we can do 15,000 minus 81, or we can do 15,000 times 1 minus 0.54, which is the remainder from the normalized total resistance. And that gives us a R1 value of 6,900 ohms. So now we have calculated our RE, R1, and R2 values. We have also figured out how much current is going to go down this path, how much current is going to go down this path, and how much current we need going down this path. The last thing to do is basically work out the value for C1. Now, if you look at C1, what that is essentially doing is making a RC filter with R1, R2, and RE, or a function of RE. And from the question, we know that we need to pass frequencies above 20 hertz to the output. So anything below 20 hertz, we want to attenuate or reduce in value. So what we're going to do is set the value of this filter or the cutoff frequency of this filter to be 20 hertz at the 3 dB point. Now for the RC filter, we also need to know what R is. So obviously you can see when looking at the circuit that R1 and R2 will appear in parallel. And we also have some load from the NPN transistor and RE. However, the current going down here is going to be reduced by a factor of beta. So we need to reduce the value of RE by beta as well. Or we need to increase the value of RE by beta as the current will be limited into the base. So doing that calculation, so you know how to do parallel resistors and then add them together, gives you a total resistance for the RC filter of 3550 ohms approximately. So plugging that into our RC filter equation, which is C equals 1 over 2 pi RFC, 
we get a capacitance value of 2.2 microfarads for a cutoff frequency of 20 hertz. So you can see over here that this filter is going to cut off any frequencies below 20 hertz. Now, strictly speaking, as part of the question, we should also filter out any frequencies above 20 kilohertz. But all that would mean is that you add a filter in front of our C1 over here. So between V in and C1, you would add a low pass filter. So that would basically be a R and a C going in parallel over here. And you would set the cutoff frequency for that filter to be 20 kilohertz. So that gives you your 20 hertz filtering for high pass over here. And you get your 20 kilohertz filtering from the new low pass filter between V in and C1. I'm not going to implement it on this circuit. As you can calculate the low pass filters, we've been through that calculation many times on the channel before. But on the screen now, you've got the final circuit, which with all the values calculated and, and put into the circuit. So we calculated RE as being 1.5 kilo ohms, R1 as being 6,900 ohms, and R2 being 8,100 ohms. We made a high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 20 hertz, and that gave us a capacitance value of approximately 2.2 microfarads for the input coupling capacitor. So that is the final solution for this question. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any questions for me, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want to support this channel or if you want to see more videos like this, consider giving a super thanks or becoming a member of the channel. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.